Hello and welcome, I'm Johnny and you want to server-side render your Svelte Git app in dark mode. A humble goal, but it requires figuring out Svelte writable and derived stores, Svelte Git endpoints and the session object, as well as some of the limitations of Svelte Git SSR. I fell into this rabbit hole last week and if you join me today, we will come out with a better understanding of some core Svelte Git concepts which we will need to solve things like user authentication. So here's what we're trying to avoid. The server renders the website with a light theme and then switches to dark mode client side. We can see the transition happening every time we refresh. We could make the transition instant, but our goal is to get the server to render the app in dark mode to begin with, if that's the user's preference. We want refreshing to be seamless. So first, we need to ensure our layout enables theming in a server-side rendered way. A common way to do themes is to add a data attribute to the HTML or the body element, like data theme dark, or a class with the current theme. We then apply our theme-specific styles to anything inside the element with that attribute or class. However, SvelteKit currently has no way to apply attributes to the HTML or the body elements, during server-side rendering. If we didn't care about the flicker, we could use Svelte's onMount lifecycle method. Find the HTML element and apply the class we want to it, client-side. But I care about the flicker. Oh. Therefore, onMount is not an option, and my workaround is to modify the layout instead, to nest our app content a bit deeper, have a theme container div where we'll be passing the class for the theme, and an app content div inside it. Since we are adding extra divs, let's remove the target option from our Svelte config and the corresponding Svelte div from our app HTML. This will make SvelteKit render the layout straight inside the body, so we're only at plus one levels of nesting for our workaround. To accommodate these changes, we need to update our app CSS to ensure our app stretches properly with the different and new containers and apply our base colors and dark mode overrides to the correct one, app content. And yes, since I said I never yeah, used Tailwind's dark mode in that video, I went with Tailwind's dark mode this time. All right, now when we give the dark class to the theme container, the app has our dark theme. If I give it light or anything else really, it will apply the light theme. Again, if we didn't care about the flicker, we could use a writable store which syncs with local stores. The server cannot read the browser's local stores, however, so it always starts off with the light theme and sync client side where we are able to use local stores. But in this video, we care. So we need something that the server can read and then pass to the client. The way you do that in SvelteKit is to implement the get session hook. Don't be alarmed, this has nothing to do with React hooks. So if we create a hooks index.ts file and export a get session method from it, SvelteKit will give us a writable store with whatever object we're returning. If we return a theme, we'll be able to access it through the session store. But that's a bit indirect, so let's create our own store, lib stores theme ts. The way derived stores work in Svelte, we pass them the store we want to use as the source of truth, and then we perform whichever operation we need and set our derived value. In our case, if there is a dollar session theme, we want to use that. If not, and we are in the browser, we can perform a match media query for prefers color scheme dark. If it matches, we'll respect the user's Y setting and set the dark theme, else we'll set the light theme. Cool, let's import our theme store in our layout component and pass its value as a class. The way you do that in Svelte with an automatic subscription is by prefixing the store variable with a dollar sign. All right, we now start off with dark mode because that's what we've hardcoded in get session. If we return theme light, we start and stay on the light theme. If we return null, we start with the light theme, then switch to my preferred dark scheme thanks to the match media query we can only run client side. Let's use the store in the header too to show the appropriate icon. And this is where we'd want to toggle the theme. However, we can't write directly to a derived store. So let's go back to our theme TS and export a method to set theme, which will update our session object, spreading all the other properties it may have, but overriding the theme with what it's given. Let's use this method in our header. We can determine our next theme by checking whether we're currently on the dark theme 
and toggle to light if we are, to dark if we aren't. Pass this value to our new method and we can now hit the icons to toggle our theme. This is close to what we want, but we are still not persisting the theme and we are hard coding its initial value in get session. So let's use the most lightweight thing for persisted state in our request. Kuyi! Get session gets the request object as an argument, which has headers, and we may have a cookie header. This is going to be a string with all our cookies for this domain, so it's actually a bit tricky to get the one cookie value we want. There are massive libraries for doing all sorts of stuff with cookies, but our use case is straightforward. All we need is to copy and paste this method I found on the internet and convert it to TypeScript. The thing with using stuff like this over a popular library is that we need to test it ourselves. So make sure to ask for a video on vtest and we'll get that sorted. In the meantime, we can now have get session use the value of a theme cookie for our theme in the session object, which means our initial theme value is now dynamic. In theory, in practice, it's always null because nothing sets that cookie. For that, we can create something like a theme.ts file in our routes directory and export a put method from it. Naming is important here as SvelteKit will magically have this method handle put requests to the theme endpoint. And we want to handle it by taking our theme value from the request body and returning instructions to set a theme cookie with this value. These instructions come in the form of a set cookie header where we can say the theme cookie should equal the theme value we just got. And you can't do anything malicious with this cookie, it's not an authentication token or anything, but we can still form good habits by setting some things like same site strict, HTTP only and secure. That way, if we do copy and paste this handler as a starting point to manage a cookie that can actually get us into trouble, we start off with settings that help us stay safe. In any case, our endpoint is live, let's hit it. Back in our set theme method, we now want to fetch theme as well, and the request method has to be put in order to hit the put handler with a throat. In theory, this means every time we set theme now, we also set the cookie we want. In practice, would you believe it, we do actually get server-side rendered dark mode as needed. It works, we did it, woohoo! We can add type cards if we want to be particular about the theme values we're accepting, we may want a delete endpoint to delete that cookie, but it's probably more interesting to think how we'd use similar logic to store other user settings. Their card if you're building an e-commerce app, their profile information if they're logged in. Keep letting me know what you think is interesting in the comments. It does affect what I cover, even when I venture into rabbit holes like today. And thanks a bunch for watching.